something that Chris, we didn't expect to be quite honest. Um, you know, last weekend we went down, we got our result down in Carondona and probably picked up a bit of momentum from that there. Missed an awful lot of opportunities out there, you know, down about it. We probably should have won the match in, in, in normal time, but in fairness, the lads showed great resilience and, you know, in the second half of the uh, uh, extra top league deserved on it. Uh, Chris, to be quite honest, on the better side. And, uh, but uh, listen, it was a tough, tough slog out there, no doubt about it. It looked like it was maybe gone when they went not 9 to 1 5 in front and Aidan McHugh dug, dug you out with that equalising point. Yeah, good score. We missed an awful lot of opportunities, missed an awful lot of place balls throughout uh, the course of the game, missed an awful lot of goal opportunities. You know, that against the better sides that you're going to meet probably now in the, in the last four that you're going to have a need, you're going to need to take. But listen, overall for, for us, it, it's great to be in the last four to be quite honest. And uh, you know, the lads are delighted there. And as I say, it, it's a small little club, and we're trying to keep it going from year to year. Um, and uh, no, it's great, great for the lads, great for everyone involved. Big moments in the game, obviously the two goals that. You scored yourselves, but you pulled off a roll the years back with a super double save there an extra time. Well, it is. Uh, yeah, it was. I had you know I had a quite enough afternoon to be quite honest. I was happy enough with that apart from getting a few kickouts away. But yeah, not the same. I got down the first ball and and uh, I, I went out and, and the second one I did. I was more or less up down the middle and luckily enough I got I got the foot to it and uh, I put it, I put it wide. But uh, no, it was it was crucial at that stage of the game and. Uh, you know, it was important that we held on and, you know, I think Aidan kicked the last point there. That was, you know, Aidan, Aidan had a soccer match earlier on, he was playing the, in a youth final, so uh, he came over and had him for the second half there. You talked to me a couple of weeks ago, you answered the call once again, the 40th year, you're playing senior football for Narasa. Yeah, listen Chris, it's, it's, I had no intention to be quite honest, you know, I, was, uh, I actually was away on a break at the time and uh, the, the lads were down in Bunkrana playing and the end up with 15 players, Pat Coffey played in goals that day, Ryan McGonigal who was in goals uh, uh, went to the States and uh, so while I was in Lanzarote I got the call that, to get a bit of work done because there's a possibility he may have to go back in because Pat got got injured in that game so that's how I got back in there in Karen Dunn. so listen I enjoyed it to be quite honest, it's great to be part, it's brilliant being in a dressing again when you put on the boots and mixing with some of them young lads and uh, you saw, you know, you love it at 54 years of age, you need McHugh coming on there I think 17 or 18 years of age and uh, it's, uh, no listen it's great, it's great and uh, as I say we're in the last four now listen and, and uh, you know we're up against it, but listen we'll, we'll give it a run. Is it easy for you to, to say yeah and, and keep coming back to, to dig them out? Not easy. Well, I'll tell you, listen, Chris, I suppose I'm chairman of the club too, and you know, the, the possibility we weren't fit to field against Karen Dunna, you know, if I hadn't gone down, we, I think we did end up with 16 players on the night, so, it made, you know, those decisions are, you know, they're kind of made for you, you have to do it, and that's it. So, as long as I'm for a walk and as long as I'm for a kickball, I'll, 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 I'll answer the call, but uh, listen, it doesn't get any easier. But listen, it's an, it was an enjoyable afternoon out there, to be quite honest, and it's always nice to win a championship match. Uh, and it does, I mean, you, you've outlined it there, I mean, it is a difficult. It is difficult for the club to keep keep facing teams at the moment, isn't it? Ah, oh, listen, Chris, it is. You know, I was just saying earlier on there that uh, you know we f were formed in the mid, mid to late seventies, and we came up through the ranks from Division Four and Division One football, and we, we played Division One football for a good number of years. We won a couple of intermediate championships. We got a lot of families that came back from the UK around about the mid eighties and uh, mid to late eighties, and we end up having two teams, and we had underage teams at under 12, 14, 16, right through to minor and twenty one. Uh, but over the last maybe nine, ten years with the downturn, a lot of families have moved away. A lot of young lads have moved away. And, you know, we have there now lads that are at college. There's no, and that middle gap between the age of, say, 21, 22, up to about 29, 30, there's no one really, they're all gone. And uh, we could have put out two teams down, but Australia, Canada, United States and the UK, there's so much young lads away. We don't have any underage teams now. And uh, apart from under 10 to 12 that we have, that's a mixed on with girls and boys, and we, and we play 11 or 12 aside and that. So numbers are very, very small. It's a small club, and you know we're in the process of a new pitch that's going to be ready to go now. Uh, the goalposts are actually going up this week, so that pitch is ready to go, and uh, hopefully that we'll have a team to put out on the next season. And you know, looking at that out there, that can give a, a great lift to the parish, a great lift to the, to the area, and as I say, we a week now to get ready for some time. Donegal Masters won the All Ireland and um, this year John Harn reckons you could maybe come back next year and, and put a push for Jared McGill's jersey. Oh jeez, I'll tell you what, I'm away I'm away off enough high and uh, you know listen, I answered the call of duty uh, with the club and uh, as I say they, they started the National League, that's that's the focus, just you know, that's still there now and the the, the draw was made there during the week and it looks like we've four home matches and three away and that you know that that's exciting, looking forward to that, and looking forward to getting back in and getting the lads back into that there. And, and uh, you know, the last two seasons, you know, 
we're definitely, I think, heading in the right direction. And uh, you know, as I say, it's great to be back playing Division One football against the top teams now, and it's a really exciting time to be to be part of uh, of Donegal football. Four home games is crucial in the National League. I mean, it can it can be the the making or the breaking of it uh, home advantage. Yeah, listen, it's so important, and you know, it's important. It's you know. There's going to be no extra motivation needed for our first home match, which is on Saturday night against, against Mayo, and that's going to be a cracker to, to set off the National League. There, there's no easy games in Division 1, we know that. And, uh, but we do face uh, a fair uh, emphasis on our home matches. And uh, you know, we have a number of. Uh, it's all difficult matches, there's no doubt about that there. But uh, it's important that we win and, and, and stay uh, playing Division 1 football, especially with a lot of these young lads coming through now. Stephen Rutcher reaffirmed his commitment to Donegal. There was a bit of speculation down the West that he was going to be named Galway manager. I'm sure yourself and the players are delighted that Stephen's sticking put with Donegal for 2020. Ah, oh, listen, exactly, yeah, and it, it, it shows you know, the, the fate that uh, Stephen has in, you know, in the group and in the setup, and you know, he really enjoyed the year in terms of the coaching end of it and working with the coaching, the, the coaching lads. And uh, you know, I met him two or three days after the, the defeat to, to Mayo, and there was no doubt in his mind he was committed. And, uh, and at least I knew he was going over. And it's great we have we have that experience again on board, working along with the likes of Karen and Gary Boyle and uh, Andrew uh, Andrew McGovern and goalkeeper coaching and all these guys. So well, it's important that that uh, that uh, that he's back on board. And you know it's important to get all the players back also. And you know it looks like we will have the majority of those guys back and maybe one or two more additions. Would you expect to see, for instance, the likes of Warren McNeilis back in a Donegal jersey next year? Listen, I'm not going to rule it out. I've already spoken with Horn and, and you know, he's in the middle of the club championship at the minute. And as I say, we'll sit down again in the next week or two. And uh, yeah, I'd be quite hopeful, yeah. I'm confident of retaining the likes of Frank McGlynn and Neil McGee from, from this year's squad. Yeah, I think so. And uh, again, a lot depends on injuries and how these guys get through the next the next couple of weeks, next couple of months in terms of the club championship. Uh, but listen, I see no reason why not. And, uh, you know, a, Frank, a fully fit Frank McGlynn and Neil McGee have a huge amount of offer in the golf football still.